Hey chums, crowdfunding is on the rise again and there is a much higher proportion now of what's called retail investors, basically people who don't invest for a living but are happy to put some money into some startups compared to professional investors, people who do it for a job. That being said, most retail investors, I'm sorry, pretty stupid. So I wanna show you how I look at the pitch page. A Crowdcube pitch page, a lot of it is open to the public which essentially means that Crowdcube and Cedars are essentially accountable for the accuracy of the information that the public sees, the video included. That's a good thing and a bad thing when it comes to thinking about the investment. It is good because all of the data there, arguably, should be verified and true. The bad thing is there's no context for that information because more often than not, founders will use sexy and good sounding data points that they may have captured in the past to increase the confidence in their opportunity, but will never tell you that those data have nothing to do with what the company's gonna do in future. Have they pivoted? Did they learn something, which means that they have to do something else? Has it consequently tanked since that data came about? We don't know. So I always take a pinch of salt, the information on a pitch page for that reason. Another thing to bear in mind is that a lot of the opportunities that come out on Crowdcube and Cedars will have gone through a private investment phase. Cedars and Crowdcube often require the founders to have raised anywhere between 50% and 75% of all of the money before they will put it live. Now, there's a few reasons for that. Economically, it's a lot of work to vet these things, and so Crowdcube Cedars don't really want to put anything up that isn't going to close. But secondly, it's great marketing, right? If all of the opportunities on the deck look like they've either about to be funded or have been funded. So again, you need to take this progress bar with a really big pinch of salt. Another thing to bear in mind is that there's this term called overfunded. What that means in crowdfunding terms is that the target has uh, been reached and now they're getting more money than they need. That is bullshit. In 90% of all cases, that's absolute trash. Founders will often set a minimum target, maybe 30 to 50% of what they actually need. And the reason they do that is because they need to hit that 50 to 75% target before it goes public. Um, and they want to show that they're overfunding so they can elicit hype. Um, so I take this overfunding very, very loosely. I don't really follow it. So with all of that in mind, there's a few things that on a pitch page I'm trying to look out for. If in the restricted documents, so the first thing I'll look at is the documents here. If I do not see a financial model, I'm not interested. And that's not because I believe financial models, I don't. In early stages, they're witchcraft, they're full of shit. But the financial model will tell me how much money they actually need to raise. Um, and I wanna see if it matches or is in the same ballpark of what they're raising on, on Crowdcube. Uh, so in this particular case, no obvious financial model. They're raising a lot of money. They're saying they're overfunded. I would not invest in this company for that reason alone. So the next thing I will typically look for is the pre-money valuation. Now, pre-money valuation is the value of the company before you write your investment. After you write your investment, the value of the company goes up by the amount of cash that they receive from investors and other assets they may accrue. This is a very high pre-money valuation, and there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with high valuations. But because it's high, one of two things must be true for this to be a valid investment. The first is that it is generating revenue that increases month on month or quarter by quarter. So I want to see a growth curve like this of revenue. And the reason for that is because you need to be able to project out some future valuation in three to five years time based on revenue. Uh, and if you can't see a five times multiple on revenue that will pay you all the other investors back and make you a significant amount of money, it's not worth it. Whereas if it's curved, curving up, then the founders, in my opinion, are perfectly within their rights to say, nah, Valuation is really high because we have no clue, frankly, how much money we're going to make. All we do know is it's just going out of control. And that is a brilliant position for a founder to be in and a brilliant position for an incoming investor to be in as well. But the second thing that might justify a high valuation is if they've created some kind of special IP. 
is their solution 10 times faster than uh, the nearest competitor or big established player? Or can they solve a problem 10 times cheaper than the competitors can or a big established player? So maybe your competitor might even buy you. You as an investor can say, all right, yeah, fair. I'm not really paying the value of the company today. I'm paying a discount on the potential exit value. So it's like flipping a house, right? It's kind of what venture investors do. So further going on the pitch page, I am far more interested in what they're going to be doing in the future and how they back that future plan up. And that comes from a pitch deck. It does not come from the pitch page. I will never, ever, ever, ever watch the video. This isn't Kickstarter. I'm not trying to buy a product. This is investment. I want to put money in and get money out. Videos are made by marketing companies more often than not to create hype and FOMO. I want to compare opportunities based upon the future story that they're telling, backed up by the historical performance that will not come from the video. The next thing I look at is team. And most founders on crowdfunding sites do not pay attention to the importance of this, uh, like this one. There is a difference between founders of a company and the team that they choose to celebrate on this pitch page. When they pick humans to celebrate, they are signaling to investors the kind of company and the kind of humans they are trying to attract. For me, personally, if I see all white men, net, <laughs> because this isn't who the founders are. This tells you the kind of talent that they can attract, the kind of cultural importance they put on divergent thinking. These things signal critical pieces of, of information for an investor. Because if they cannot hire going forward, then your investment is, is lost, frankly. As opposed to the pitch deck where they often just tell the founders. The last thing I would look at, I want to see the number of investors, which will tell me the average amount of money per investment. If the number of investors is low and the average, uh, sorry, and the total amount raised is high, that's a brilliant signal. It's a brilliant signal because it implies that experienced high net worths or funds or VCs may be participating in this round. Not past rounds, but this round. If there's like quite obviously check sizes of a hundred grand upwards, that's not fuck about money. That is, I'm a serious investor money. Uh, I would feel good that there are some seasoned experienced investors in the pack. So obviously the opposite is going to be true. If there's lots of investors and not a lot of money raised, it's going to be packed full of people who's invested £10. A very common tactic founders do, I confess I've done this, but they get all of their friends to write £10 investments because it pushes them to the top of the most recent investment on the front pages of Crowdcube and Cedars. So don't fall for that one. There's obviously going to be more. This is just how I review the pitch page itself. But to be clear, I make my investment decision on the Q&A and on the pitch deck. I only look for a few pieces of key information on the pitch page, which you would not likely find in the investor deck. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you avoid a few um, traps. Uh, and that is how I review a Crowdcube pitch page.